Hey, consider with me for a moment the idea of a shape. So if I said draw a shape, would you draw something like this? It certainly is a valid shape. If I said a triangle, what comes to mind? You might think of uh, an equilateral triangle. Or you might think of a right triangle. Or what is that thing? It's the uh, acute or obtuse. And that one I think is acu uh, acute. So then if I asked you for a quadrilateral, most of you would just draw a square, but some would say, no, I think I'm going to draw a rectangle. And others would say, that looks to me like a parallelogram. Or what that thing is? Uh, yeah, that one. And then the square. And so if I were to draw this into computer programming, you might have a problem with inheritance here. And so if I had a generic object called shape and then had descendants called triangles and rectangles, you'd be ready to think about the problem that's just ahead of us. Let's take a look at part five of our activity that we're working on right now. The title is Polymorphism with Shape Classes. And so in this activity, we're going to implement an interface class and demonstrate the idea of polymorphism. So let's get started here. I'm going to set up a project that looks like this here with a, several of these different classes. So let's get into our Eclipse program and let's make a new Java project. I'm going to call this thing Assignment 8. Inside of Assignment 8, I'm going to start with making a, a new package and I'm going to call this thing the base. Inside of base, I'm going to make a new interface. And so this is going to be called the shape interface. And also inside of base, I'm going to create a class called shape base, which is going to be a class that the other ones inherit from. All right, so that's our base folder. Let's make another package. This one I'm going to call shape. Inside of shape, I'm going to have rectangle. And I'm also going to make a triangle. Finally, I'm going to have a main program, and so I'm going to create a package and call this item in here the test class, or you might call it main program, because it does have the main activity. All right, so this is what we're trying to create here. We have a base, shape, and test package, and these are the items inside it. So let's start with our interface for shape. So every shape is going to have to have a interface as its model. Now the only piece of the contract that we're going to make is we're going to force everything that is a shape to have a method called calculate area. And since it's the interface, we don't have to actually create the formula for interface. Let's close this. So as we create our program, it would be helpful to think of the objects that we're creating in this hierarchy. At the top, we have a shape interface, which is implemented by a shape base. Then the rectangle and the triangle are both extending shape base. So keep this image in mind while we're coding. So after we're done with the uh, interface, let's go down the ladder and let's go to shape base. So the first thing that we should tell about the shape base is that it implements the interface. So I'll type in implements shape interface. Okay, so we've got ourselves a error message and it says you have an unimplemented method. And so calculate area must be done next. I'm going to set a few properties that are common to all shapes. So the uh, properties that I'm going to create are name and then an integer for width and an integer for height. Now I understand that not all shapes can be defined with width and height and certainly not with integer dimensions. But for our case, this will work fine since we only have a few different shapes. Now I'm going to generate the uh, getters and setters and the constructor using Eclipse's helpful tools. Okay, I've got the constructor and the getters and the setters. 
at the very end you see that we have calculate area which is the interface contract that I'm fulfilling. Now let's move into triangle here. So our triangle is going to be an extension. So it extends the base or the shape base. So let's see what it tells me. It says I have to import this. It comes from another package called base. Now the triangle is underlined and it says you need to add the constructor. So the constructor is correct. It will call the super class first and then it can call its own. Now if we look at the shape base, we notice that the calculate area calculates zero no matter what the dimensions of the shape are. So we're going to want to override that. We don't want zero for our triangle. We want to actually use the dimensions to calculate the area. So if you recall from your geometry class that the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. Or in this case, width times height divided by two. Let's go look at the rectangle. So pause the video, see if you can do the rectangle on your own and then I'll show you the solution in a moment. Okay, here's what it looks like. We're going to extend the shape base. We must import and then we must implement the uncompleted uh, constructor. So once again, we're going to implement the calculate area. So we will override the base shapes calculations and we will use width times height for a rectangle. All right, so let's get this uh, into a testing mode. Let's open up test Java and let's create a few lines of code to test out our app. At the beginning, I'm going to create a helper function that will display the area of our shape. So I'm going to use a parameter called shape base and the name of the uh, vari variable is base. So what this means is that it will accept either a rectangle or a triangle since the shape base is the uh, parent of both of those. Now simply I'm going to display the area. Okay, so it's a one line function and it will display the area for the shape named base.getName. It will show the width and the height and then finally calculate the area. All right, so in the main area, I'm going to create an array of shapes and let's just have two of them. All right, so you can see that I'm creating shapes number zero and shapes number one. And the first one is a rectangle and we'll give him dimensions of 10 by 20 and the other is a triangle. It looks to me like I have to do some importing as well. Lastly, I want to print the details for each of these. All right, so I'm going to create a for loop and it will run through every item in the array and we'll call the function called display area. Now you notice that uh, I have an underline when I'm finished with display area it says this must be a static variable. Why is it supposed to be static? It's because it is being called inside of a static function called main. And so that means we have to follow the pattern of its parent. Okay, so this should be ready to run. Let's see what happens. So you can see I have the display the area for a shape named rect. It's got its width and height, and then the area is 200. And you can see that the triangle is also calculated in area, but it's only 100. Let's do print line, and that way they'll come up on separate lines. So the principles that we're trying to demonstrate here are, first of all, an interface. So the calculate area is the contract. All shapes must have a calculate area. Then we have an abstract function or an abstract idea of a base shape. And so it has some items in it and it calculates an area of zero. We didn't really want that so in our rectangle we overloaded or overrode the uh, calculate area with its own function 
the triangle gets his own function and then finally at the test we can see the difference when the calculations are displayed. So later on in our project for this class we're going to create a contact app and so our contacts will be the type of business contacts or personal contacts. So you're going to see this idea come back again where we have a base item and then triangles and rectangles are the descendants and we will have two types of contacts that will descend in our program. Let's go look at the instructions to see if there's any other things. Okay, so now at the extension part, we have an idea of creating more shapes. So circles, ovals, regular hexagons, or trapezoids. So go get your math book out and figure out how to do a formula for the height and width of these guys and tell me what the actual area is. So you might have to use integers or you might have to use some uh, doubles or floats. Lastly, I'd like you to write a small description of what polymorphism is doing here and how it's demonstrated. Give me your Java doc code and your zip file and we should have ourselves a finished project.